Hello, everybody. Uh, we are having people log on right now. So we'll give folks just a couple minutes here to uh, get into Zoom and get their video and everything set up. So hang tight. We'll start officially in about 30 seconds here. If you're on, um, you will be muted. Um, feel free to share your video if you'd like. If you're calling in, um, just make sure that uh, you are muted or in a quiet place. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and start. And as folks log on, they'll be able to catch up. Um, welcome everybody to the My Future, My Vote, Voter Engagement Campaign kickoff here at the Conservation Lands Foundation. My name is Andres Esparza. I am the Grassroots Engagement Director here in Durango, Colorado. And first and foremost, I wanna thank everybody for making time today, or if you're not able to attend right now for watching this in the future. We're going to dive into this campaign, this Get Out the Vote GOTV campaign, all the reasons why it's important more than ever to get people to the polls this year, how it is totally 501c3 compliant, and how it enhances your mission to do this in the coming years. Uh, for now, again, welcome everybody. Um, I appreciate you all making time to be here. I know it's not always easy to make time. Um, but we really do appreciate it. This will be recorded and you'll be receiving all of this in a follow-up call. So feel free to uh, follow up with us afterwards if you have any specific questions. It uh, looks like a bunch of folks have just logged on. So we're gonna go ahead and officially kick it off. Um, over the next hour here, we wanna go over this new campaign that we're kicking off with help from the Friends Grassroots Network and all of our partners. We wanna talk about how everybody can be engaged in this Get Out the Vote campaign. And we wanna be able to share inspiration with you all that hopefully you can share with your networks, whether it's personal or professional um, throughout the Friends Grassroots Network. Uh, for those of you who are calling in, you may just hear the audio of this video I'm about to share. For those of you who are on Zoom, I wanna start with a little inspirational video that we shot here at CLF with a bunch of staff members um, and family talking about why we want to vote public lands this year and urge all of our networks to do the same. Um, please look at this video and think about how you could maybe replicate this in your personal network. Um, because again, when we connect with people, we connect with values and we get people to the polls to vote their values is how we make sure that those in elected positions really do represent our values. So again, I'm gonna take a step back here and instead I'm just gonna put up a quick video of that we put together here at the Conservation Lands Foundation and I wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to hear it. So let's see, let's make sure that you can hear this, here we go. Voting is important because it is the foundation of our democracy. No matter what issues you care about, it depends on who is in office at all levels. We want leaders in Washington that are going to think like we do, that are going to value the, the places and the lands that we value. 
We all love public lands. There are so many places in this country that we hold near and dear that need to be protected. But there are landscapes across the country that we all connect with, recreate in, and go to to heal. They carry so much value from cultural um, to ecological to recreational importance. They are a piece in the puzzle to combat climate change. That's why it's so important to vote for, for people that share those same values. Join us this November as we pledge to vote to protect and advocate for our public lands. Vote your public lands. If you're going to protect public lands, you need to vote, okay? I hope you all enjoyed that short little moment of inspiration. Again, that's just a small selection of staff here and their family who are all looking forward to November and realizing that when we get out to the polls or when we mail in our ballots, we're going to be voicing to leaders the values that we hold and what we hope they rep how they represent us in the highest levels of office down to our local town halls. So as we go through the rest of this, just recognize that this is a get out the vote campaign. This is nonpartisan. We are not asking for one candidate or another. We are not asking for one representative or another. What we're doing is we're asking people to go out and vote. And when they do that, for them to be thinking about their public lands and the values that they hold and the ways that they wanna see these places managed and protected. So again, to kick it off, just we wanna thank everybody. Um, what we're trying to do here at the Conservation Lands Foundation and through our Friends Grassroots Network is we're really trying to set the baseline. We're trying to normalize this pro-conservation leadership at the highest levels and at all levels. But we're trying to foster a strong participatory culture at the same time, recognizing that democracy only works if we participate in it fully. And so again, for those of you who are gonna go out and plan on vote, voting in November, thank you. We urge you to stick with us here, follow through with this campaign and reach out with any questions because more important than you voting is you being able to reach out to your networks, especially those people who are first time voters who are traditionally excluded from voting or simply are confused by the process, especially in a year like this. This is the year to get people to the polls, help them vote. So first and foremost, and before anything else, thank you so much for joining us. Um, a few quick housekeeping things before we dive in fully. Um, you're on mute right now. I saw a bunch of people typing in questions and in the chat when the audio didn't work. That is exactly what we need to do. Um, if you have a question, please type it in the question and answer box. Um, B, one of our staff members is managing all the questions. So if it doesn't get answered right away, uh, don't worry, B is on top of it. If you have any comments or you wanna share any resources or give kudos to people throughout the presentation, feel free to use the chat box. B will also be monitoring that and compiling questions if they happen to go through there. Uh, we're gonna reserve the last 15 minutes for Q&A, maybe more because we recognize there's a lot of questions in this, especially this being the first time this network has carried out this sort of campaign. So again, keep those questions, type them out and we'll get to them one by one. Um, there's going to be three different groups of people presenting today. Uh, there will be the CLF presentation, mainly myself. Uh, Rachel from Motivote, which is a platform that we're using, will also be sharing. And Tim Mooney for Alliance for Justice, a lawyer from that organization, will be sharing a bit on C3 compliance um, and how this is all 100% okay for our network. As well, all of the information I'm sharing here, you'll get in a follow-up email, this recorded video, along with the voter toolkit, which you can think of as the how-to guide. Um, so everything that is on this webinar is pulled directly from the voter toolkit. And I did that intentionally so that you wouldn't feel you're gonna miss anything. You're gonna receive this exact information. So feel free to just engage with what we're presenting, reach out with any questions you might have, and then at the end, we'll get to it and you'll also receive all of this in a follow-up, which will be really helpful as you go back to your organizations and share some of this. Again, to increase pro-conservation turnout this November, we've created a voter registration and mobilization campaign for our friends grassroots network. 
It's built on a digital platform that makes it fun and easy and engaging for your supporters to get together, mobilize and vote on behalf of public lands. But more importantly, as I mentioned, be able to reach out to their personal networks, especially as we think about those people who don't traditionally make it to the polls. We think about the millions of 17 year olds who are gonna be 18 in November and this being their first election, making sure they're supported throughout the entire process. Over the next bit here, we're going to go over a few things. Uh, we're going to briefly introduce the overall campaign. Um, we're going to briefly touch on 501c3 compliance in general, get out the vote campaigns and specific to ours, and we'll be inviting Tim to speak at that time. Uh, Rachel from Motivote is going to actually dive into the platform and share her screen so you can see what the mechanics look like. Um, we're going to share specifics on how the network can engage and we'll go through the toolkit and all the easy steps that we've And then, of course, we're going to save time for Q and A at the end. Um, throughout the entire presentation, you'll see this lovely artwork here with my future, my vote and some great silhouettes and other landscapes painted. Um, B, our Nevada program director has given a lot of her time and energy and artistic talent to give us this artistic feel to this campaign. Um, and I just think it's worth mentioning her name a million times for all the great work that's gone into the artistic feel to this. Again, this is very much a grassroots led campaign and we can't do it without it coming from individuals. So B, thank you. And thank everybody who's gonna share this wonderful artwork along the way. So first off, why now? Um, very simply put, our democracy and public lands need us. Um, you can research voter participation numbers over the past few decades. You can research by who votes and who doesn't vote. But overall, the general idea is that we don't have a strong participatory culture in our democracy. People don't go out to the polls for a variety of reasons, whether it's people not trusting the system, not thinking their vote's gonna count, possibly being suppressed in their vote, um, or just not knowing how to vote. There are a lot of barriers that prevent people from showing up in November or mailing their ballot before then, which means that a select group of people um, really get to dictate who's in charge and what decisions are made, not just for our society at large, but specifically for our public lands. And our hope with this webinar, this campaign moving forward, is that we normalize this behavior that a get out the vote campaign is our duty. Um, it is not something that we should see as external to our work or mission drift. It is absolutely central and crucial to all of us who are eligible to vote to encourage other people to vote. Being a part of the Friends Grassroots Network means advocating for your public lands. And the strongest way to do that is to make sure that elected representatives are elected by the majority of the people and that there are no barriers for people getting to those polls. So again, this is nothing special or this is nothing that threatens your 501c3 status. In fact, this is what should be expected of all organizations in every election year. And again, we're happy to answer any and all questions y'all might have. So please join us for the rest of this presentation and we'll save time for those questions at the very end. Uh, real quickly, this campaign, My Future, My Vote, can be thought of as three distinct um, phases. And we'll go over these and kind of the communications and work that goes into it. But it is not overwhelming. Think of it as Right now, today, up until the end of September, you're inspiring people. You're connecting people with their public lands. You're letting them know that you as grassroots organizations in their community have been advocating for their lands and their landscapes, proper management and proper leadership to be accountable for that management. Um, you're sending beautiful pictures, you're connecting folks with the things that matter to them, the places that they go hunt and fish and recreate, and introducing this Motivote tool as a way to get up to speed on when they need to be voting and, ho and how they can access voting. October through November, you're motivating people to sign up to vote. You're reminding people that public lands depend on them voting and you're making sure that they're signing up so that they can get reminders of when and where to vote 
how to access voting, whether it's in person or by mail. And you're starting to tie together that public lands messaging of public lands need us, please get out and vote. And then come November 3rd, regardless of which way any of our elections go from the highest level down to our local county or city level, um, we're going to reach out and we're going to thank people for coming out to vote. We want to make sure that just because a vote doesn't go our way doesn't mean that we're not going to go out the next year and vote. What it means is that we got people to participate and regardless of the outcome, whether or not we agree with it, participation matters. And it is our belief that the more people participate in our democratic process, um, the truer our representation is going to be. We're not always going to agree on it and that's totally fine, but we do need to get people out to vote. So inspire, motivate, and thank. And we'll go into details of what all of these steps actually mean. Um, but for now, I want to push through this and kind of get into some of the more nitty gritty and probably specific to some questions that folks are going to have. Um, I don't know if Tim Mooney is on. Tim, I'm going to look for you in the attendees list here. Give me one second. And B, if you can help me out, or David, that would be really helpful. There, Tim Mooney is now allowed to talk. Uh, Tim Mooney is with Alliance for Justice, um, a law group, and I'll let him introduce himself, that we've worked with in the past on various webinars and resources with Get Out the Vote, voter engagement, and candidate participation in as nonprofits focused on conservation. Um, I'm going to let him share a little bit about how this is all 501c3 permissible, um, go through a few things, and then David Feynman from the CLF side is going to add in a bit. Um, we realize this is probably the thorniest part of this campaign. So before we even dive into the mechanics of how it works, I wanted to spend some time here. And any and all questions that are going to come up, let's leave them towards the end. And if we don't get to them on this call, I will get to them either through David or Tim on a follow-up. But for now, I want to introduce Tim Mooney from Alliance for Justice to share a bit on a 501c3 compliance in a Get Out the Vote campaign. Thanks, Andres. I really appreciate you uh, allowing me to speak here today. Uh, as you've said, I think it's really important that everybody who's listening to this, who's watching this, who's attending this, that you know that 501c3s not only can, but as you demonstrated, perhaps now more than ever, should be engaged and get out the vote work. You know, sometimes the rules that govern 501c3s sometimes seem like a barrier to doing good work like this, but I'm here to tell you, I practice this law in this area for the last couple of decades, the law does not stand in your way uh, to do the type of nonpartisan voter registration and GOTV work that my future, my vote is looking at doing. Think of your legal advocacy work, um, or your, your advocacy work that is legal, I should say, uh, as a wide open road. It, there's plenty of room to maneuver on this big wide open road. You just don't want to go busting through the guardrails on either side of that. Those guardrails are basically supporting candidates or opposing candidates. Where those guardrails are set is a very subjective thing. It's based on uh, all of the facts and circumstances in context. And that's how the IRS looks at all of these things. But ultimately, you know, rather than go into a half hour or hour long treatise on how all of these rules work, I'm here to tell you that your message in any nonpartisan get out the vote or voter registration work, you know, you can target based on common interests or problems or historical underrepresentation. That is, that's not only legal, but it's explicitly legal under IRS guidance. The no-go zone is registering or doing GOTV efforts by 501c3s because you're trying to get people to vote in a particular way or for a particular person. You leave that for the other organizations that are out there, the C4s, the 527s, things like that. Focus on nonpartisan efforts through 501c3s because you can make a real change there and your organizations are best built for it. Now, here on the slide that you can see here, you'll see that there are a whole kind of some best practices, some guidelines here. If you're engaged in issue advocacy, you're allowed to continue that separate from your get out the vote and voter registration work. Keep that separated. It just makes your nonpartisan efforts in this type of a uh, project to be a little bit easier to uh, avoid crossing into those areas that are no-go zones. Um, 
conduct your nonpartisan public education and training sessions at, in a way that doesn't show any favoritism or any opposition to other folks. It gets a little tricky, of course, when you've been critical of certain elected officials. That's possible. Keep that separate from these types of efforts, and then you're going to be in a safer place. Um, you're allowed to do things like candidate education and things like that, voter guides, uh, 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 voter education pieces. The rules around that are actually pretty prescriptive to stay in the safe zone. We actually have publications and resources at Alliance for Justice. You can go to boulderadvocacy.org and learn more about how you can do that in a safe and effective manner. But the most important thing and why we're all here today is you're allowed to do things around nonpartisan get out the vote and voter registration drives. Again, you're allowed to target, so long as it's not in a partisan way, you're allowed to target communities that have been historically underrepresented uh, at the polls, have common interests or problems. Those are the types of things that you can do. And you can be incredibly effective at getting more people to vote than ever before. Uh, and last but not least, and it's listed right here, it, it's kind of, it's, it's sort of like the cousin to this type of activity, voter protection activities. I think we've seen some concerted efforts by some forces out there to try to disenfranchise voters. Um, and, and I'm here to tell you that it is a purely 501c3 okay activity to fight back against those types of things. So, you know, generally speaking here, kind of as a summary, it's legal, it's helpful, it's perhaps more necessary than ever as a 501c3 to be engaging in this type of activity. If you have questions, I'm gonna be around at the end. I can talk more about that. Of course, there's resources on our website at boulderadvocacy.org. Thank you, Tim. And uh, David, I'll turn it over to you for a few moments from the CLF perspective, especially as the main contact as people have some further questions. Yeah, thank you, Andres, and, and thank you, Tim, so much for kind of laying out the the can and may, what you can and may do as an organization uh, with a 501c3 status. I just want to briefly touch on uh, why you should. Uh, many of your organizations over the last years and even into the previous administration have been dealing with issues on the ground that require uh, real public engagement to get behind issues, whether it's commenting on resource management planning or going to town halls to share perspectives with members of Congress. And I think, you know, from your organization's perspective, particularly hopefully now having clarity that engaging in get out the vote uh, campaigning is something you can do. I think doing that, sharing that with your supporters will only enhance their engagement as individuals in all the other work you do that requires public participation. So there's obviously an important investment in building more people in your community to be out voting and you know flexing that muscle every election. But there's a tremendous benefit to your organization, the work you do, the places you're looking to protect by getting people more invested in their public responsibility around engagement as Andres mentioned at the very beginning. So um, I realize everybody lives in different communities and there are people in different communities that have uh, feelings about the politics of engaging in this type of work, even if it's legal. Uh, I'm happy to sit down and walk through that with you if you have questions about how best to approach that. Um, but hopefully you'll at least walk away from this understanding that this is something you can do um, and will hopefully build an understanding of why it's valuable for all of the work you do and the lands you care about. So uh, happy to answer questions later on this call, but I'm always accessible outside of this call as well. My email address is there on the slide and, and happy to set up a time to talk with people by phone. Thank you, David. And thank you, Tim. And again, just to say it one more time, we will not ask you to do anything that comes anywhere close to threatening your 51C3 status unless we make it explicitly clear. And that is not a position we wanna be putting people in. So if you follow the guidance that we lay out in the toolkit, rest assured, you're doing the best thing you can in this election cycle. If you wanna do more, please reach out to us. There are plenty of ways to do more. Um, so now that we've gone over that it is totally okay and encouraged, um, now we're getting into the how, we've gone past the why. And how is we're doing it through a platform called Motivote. Um, and Rachel, one of the co-founders of Motivote is on this call and she'll be speaking in just a second about Motivote and 
not so much the history, we have it here on the slide, but really just giving us a quick sneak peek at what the platform looks like. Um, knowing that all of this is live right now. Um, if you're on some of our social feeds, you've probably seen some of us at CLF starting to share it as of this morning. If you've gone to our website, you've seen it already. The Motivote system is live and ready to go, but I wanted to turn it over to Rachel for uh, five to seven minutes here to quickly go over the system and what it can do um, as a quick overview, knowing that this toolkit will really have the nitty gritty details for all the, all the more important stuff. So Rachel, welcome, it's all yours. Great, thanks Andres, glad to be here. Um, so I am going to, I think, you have to stop sharing your screen so I can share mine, but then I will share my screen. All right. Great. Uh, so, uh, hi everyone. I am Rachel. I am one of the co-founders of Motivote. Really excited to be here today. Um, and so, as Andre said, there's going to be a lot more information in your toolkit, but wanted to give you a quick overview of our model and walk through the platform. Um, so the way that MotiVote works, and I'll show you this on the platform, is that folks uh, commit to vote with a group or a social network like your organizations. Um, we help them get ready to vote with bite-sized actions. Um, for doing those actions, we give people points, which both foster some friendly competition um, and can be redeemed to win real life rewards. Um, and then we tap into social accountability by having folks share their I voted selfie with us at the end of the process uh, to confirm their vote. So when you get started on Motivote, there's going to be a special CLF landing page. Uh, this page will be going up uh, this week, but the platform is live. Folks will sign up for their accounts. Um, and then they will get an email to activate it as well as an introduction uh, to Motivote. Um, and then we'll be able to go to the site to walk through it. So I am going to share that now um, and walk you through the, the platform. So when you first come on, there is a welcome message and a tour. I'm going to skip that right now because I'll be your tour guide today. Uh, I will also mention that there is a chat down at the bottom here. Um, so if you ever have questions, you can get in touch with the Motivote team uh, through this chat box and we will be able to chat with you. So I just want to walk through the basics of the platform. I've already created my account here, um, but there's kind of five key components here at the top. So the first is the overview. Uh, this is the first thing people are going to see. It will orient them to the platform um, and they'll be able to see upcoming actions and things that they can do. The second tab here is our members. So this is everyone who has created an account on the platform thus far. You can see the number of actions they've taken, uh, how many people they've invited, where they're located, uh, and how many points that they have. This tab here is for everyone on the My Future, My Vote platform. I'll also show you a little bit about Teams uh, in a minute and where you can find users. Before I get into Teams though, I wanna talk briefly about actions. So these are really the core of the platform um, and how you're gonna help people get ready to vote. Uh, so there are actions on the platform that both help us learn a little bit more about folks, but then help people get ready to vote. Uh, the first things are getting election reminders. So this is folks can get text messages. Um, and then really importantly is finding your next election. So what you do here is folks will put in their address. Um, and when they do that, it's then gonna pop up with their next election. So if they have a primary, for example, before uh, the next election, they'll get information like for that. But the most important thing here is that we are then tailoring the information that people get to the location they're voting. So we're able to give them personalized nudges that will help them get ready. So this is based on their location and the rules in their state. Um, so I can do things like put election day on my calendar or select my voting method. So I'm gonna vote in person, let's say, I will save my voting method, and then that's gonna give me a series of other actions to take as we get a little bit closer to the election. 
things like making my plan for election day, looking up my polling place. Similarly for mail-in ballots, uh, we will do things like making sure you request your ballot, you know, checking in that you've received it and send it back. And again, these will all be personalized nudges based on the information uh, that people give to us. And so we're able to help sure, make sure that they follow through. So for doing each of these, I'm getting points. Um, that also goes back to the leaderboard, uh, so you're able to see how many points you have there. Uh, but points can also be used in the prize store to win real life rewards. Uh, so these prizes uh, will be adding more as we get closer to the election. There'll also be some CLF specific prizes. It operates on a raffle model, so you can use your points uh, to win things like discount codes or free products. Um, and then uh, we will send them out to folks after the election. We manage this whole process. Uh, the other piece to talk about here is teams. So you can see that there are a couple of teams set up. Uh, so you can either just invite people to the general My Future, My Vote platform, but if you're interested, you can also create a team specifically for your organization um, and then invite them directly to that so that they're part of a smaller community. This will also make it easier for you to track your specific people um, and you'll be able to see things like who are the members on that team um, and uh, also, if you want, you can create sub teams, um, which we can, uh, which would allow you to have even smaller groups within that. Uh, before I turn it back over to Andres, the last thing that I want to mention here is inviting friends. Um, so this is a really easy way to get more people involved. So you'll all be, you know, pushing this out through your networks and can use the general invite links. But then we encourage people to bring more people into the fold by giving them points for inviting people and having them join. Each person gets a personalized invite link so they get credit and you can track who invited who. Um, and this is just a really great way to get it out beyond your base membership, but to other folks who are interested in voting their conservation values. So folks can copy these messages uh, or their link. This can be customized and done through social share, uh, but it's a really easy way to get folks ready to vote. Um, so with that, I am going to hand it back over uh, to Andres, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that come up when we get to the question and answer section. Hey, Rachel, thank you so much. And thank you all at Motivote for doing the hard work. Um, as we were exploring how we were gonna do this campaign, um, partnering with Motivote saved us, and I'm not kidding, 100, plus hours of work, if not more, in crafting all of this, figuring out when different states have different deadlines. And again, the goal with all of this is to make it as easy as possible. People click on a link, register to vote, and then they get reminders of when the next milestone in, their, in the path to voting by November comes up. We wanna make it easy so that folks get out and vote. Um, right now, you all are looking at my screen here with how your organization can use MotiVote. The beauty of it is that all you have to do is take that link that's there and copy and paste it into your regular comms. Maybe there's a special series of emails that go out once a week about voting, center it around that link. Maybe you just have a regular newsletter that goes out every two weeks. Make sure that link is in there. At a very simple level, it'll drive folks to that one election center and they can register to vote themselves. If you wanted to go a little further down into the rabbit hole and create your own team, like you saw David Feynman and myself have each created our own team, um, you can create a team for your organization. This is really helpful because then you can see who is registering for your team given the unique link that you will receive if you create your team. This is helpful if you want to engage with particular constituents, see who's politically active, or who you can approach as an organization. Uh, just be careful when you're setting it up. Um, you do have to type in your title and upload your image right the first time, um, but we'll talk more about that as folks decide to create their own teams or not. But again, to make it simple, share the link. That's all you have to do. You can insert it in any number of places, emails, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, any way that you communicate with people, communicate this platform. So 
how the network can engage. Again, our goal with all of this is to make it as easy as possible. So think of it as five steps. One, sign up for Motivate, Motivote. If you're gonna create your own team, go ahead, go on in and create your own team. Um, if you're just gonna poke around and sign up personally, go ahead and do that, but get comfortable with it. And that should take, you know, a few minutes really. It's a very intuitive platform. Um, to share important links with your members, take that thing, whether it's the initial link or your team's personalized link, and go ahead and start inserting it into your comms, into your everyday comms. My expectation, um, or my hope rather, is that up until election day, every single message we send out should have a small tagline that says, are you registered to vote? Please vote, click here. Um, the idea being that it should be a part of and central to everything that we are doing. Um, the third one, and we'll get into this a little bit, is get organized. Beyond just sharing the link, we're going to share in the toolkit a social media calendar, a way that you can week by week have specific messaging leading up to election day. Uh, we stopped short of actually giving folks copy of what they can put into their communications, we created a list of themes for every week up until November 3rd that you're welcome to use. But more importantly, and we'll skip ahead to number five, make it your own. Um, while CLF could reach out to thousands and thousands of people, and we will, to ask them to show up to vote, it doesn't necessarily make a difference if we ask somebody in Ontario, Oregon to vote. What's going to matter more if it, is if Friends of the Owahi and Tim and Sammy personally reach out to Rachel and say, Hey, as a resident of Ontario who loves to get out in the Oahe, we're asking you to vote. And I think that's where the power of our network really comes in handy. And again, go back to number four here, get social. Um, the best way we're going to share this is basically whatever way you are able to communicate with your members best. For some folks, it's Facebook. For some folks, the very active newsletter. For other folks, it's Instagram. Whatever works for you, find that and share out in that way. So again, we tried to make this as easy as possible. This is in the toolkit, um, but this is the social media schedule that I alluded to earlier. Three phases, inspire, motivate, and thank. And under each of those, there are parameters and things that you should probably be thinking about at each point. Um, again, don't worry too much about what's on this screen. This will be coming to you, but we wanted to make it as easy as possible. Um, we're launching on Today, 818, National Voter Registration Day is in one month. That's a great milestone to keep in mind. We have a month leading up to when we want everybody registered to vote, but ideally we want people registered before that. Early voting, October to November, this year is gonna be particularly important with um, issues with the Postal Service and people going to public places to vote given the pandemic. We really want to be making sure that we're protecting people while we're protecting our democracy. So the messaging may be sign up for absentee ballots, vote by mail, whatever is allowed to make sure that we are responsible with our democracy, but also responsible with our health at the same time. And again, come 11-3, we're going to vote. And at some point after that, we will know the results. And whether we are personally happy with them or not, I want us to look back and think how many people did I, did we, did us as organizations of the network get to the polls to vote? Because I think that's maybe gonna be more important than individual outcomes one by one. A lot of information here, uh, but really this is diving a little bit deeper um, into what's already in the toolkit. I just wanted to give a couple examples of what some of our social media themes look like. Again, looking at this week by week, there's um, a series of themes that you can include or you can craft email messages or Facebook posts or Instagram posts around, um, especially thinking about things like um, public land days or how many days it is to the election or the ways that your communities benefit from public lands participation and voting. These are all themes that really connect people with their landscape and give them an actionable way to impact their landscape. In this case, for these next two months, it's voting and getting people out to vote. 
This is another series of what phase two could look like with sample social media posts and themes. Again, this is all in the toolkit, so don't worry too much about this information. Again, once it's all said and done, we're gonna be thanking folks, regardless of what the outcome was, people going out to vote is success. People getting out to vote their values is democracy. And ultimately, that's what we're striving for. Um, to make it really easy, again, in the toolkit, we not only have a bunch of sample hashtags you can use, but in the toolkit, you're actually gonna get a link to Drive that has tons of artwork by B and our other consultants. Um, that is all going to be shareable for you all. Um, some will have the CLF branding, some will not. But the social media visual assets and guidance and graphics are things that you'll be able to click into the folder, copy it, and throw it into Instagram, throw it into a Facebook post. And again, all of this artwork was done by B. It is fantastic, and it really was meant to represent all of the landscapes that we get to operate in. These paintings, these watercolors, are all based off of the landscapes that conservation lands encompass. So again, it's really representing that these are the places that we wanna protect. So in the follow-up email and next steps, uh, you're gonna get a copy of this recording. I really urge you to share this and the toolkit and any other resources we include with other folks in your network. Um, we realize, and again, we're going to answer some questions in a bit, that um, this isn't necessarily easy work. And this is also sometimes work that folks are uncomfortable with because we've never done it before. And all of that is perfectly okay. David, myself, and the rest of the CLF team are here to support you along the way to answer any and all questions. Um, but we're going to ask you specifically, if you're on this call or you're watching, you're the missing link. We're relying on you to share it with leadership in your organizations and let them know that this is not only okay, but this is expected. This is what we should be doing this year. Um, after everybody has agreed, which yes, you should agree that you're doing this, um, you're going to have to create a plan. This isn't something that you can just share a link once and it's going to work. Um, work with your comms team if you have one. If you don't have a comms team, but you have a person who mainly handles your social media, create a plan week by week of how and when this is going to be shared out. Um, this is something that should be trickled into all communications up until voting day so that we can get everybody out to the polls. And then finally, um, we are running a parallel campaign, basically the same campaign, but through CLF. Um, and if you click on the link to visit our 2020 election center, you're going to get to view that video that we showed at the very beginning, but also a link of resources uh, specific to a lot of other places and more deep level information. And I wanted to stop here real fast because one of those resources I think speaks to something that we're trying to do here at the network. Um, we recognize that all of this is based on the assumption that somebody has internet access, can go to MotiVote, can register to vote, and get reminders to vote at an easily accessible place or through voting system. Um, based on where we operate and the reality of the rural West, there are a lot of people who either live in small rural communities, a lot of indigenous communities that have been, tra been traditionally excluded from voting, and those are the communities that we're going to be working with other partners as well to make sure that we aren't furthering that disconnect with certain communities and our democratic process. Um, we're going to ask for your help in thinking about not just who do you already know who's going to show up to vote, but who do you know that traditionally hasn't had access to vote? And what role do you play in getting first time voters to the polls? Think about all the 17 year olds who are going to be 18 by November 3rd or eligible to vote by then. Please help us get them to the polls and allow them to take part in their first election and support them along the way. Think about the folks who have been excluded from voting. Think about your role in getting them out to the polls. That's monumental work that transcends any and all conservation work that we get to do. And then um, finally, just get yourself out there. I, I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but you should be getting out to vote and making sure that you are voting your values. Um, final last point before I turn it over to question and answer for all of us 
is recognizing that there is a small, there's a segment of the community that is not eligible to vote for a variety of different reasons, whether it's citizenship, um, prior record, or anything like that. That doesn't mean that you're excluded from the process. What that means is that you physically can't mail in a ballot or show up to the polling station and vote, but you can encourage other people to vote. You can use this platform and share it on your networks to get people out to the polls. And again, just because you can't physically cast a ballot doesn't mean that you can't have a role in shaping our democracy. So I would urge everybody to look at the power and privilege they have in voting and think about how you're gonna bring somebody with you to vote this year. It's our, it's our dream, it's our vision here at CLF that with our 80 group friends grassroots network that we can bring thousands of people to the polls. And maybe in that thousands, there's maybe a few hundred people who are voting for the first time. If we're a part of that, and if public lands are a part of a person's first voting experience, we are radically changing the voting landscape. So I am gonna stop talking for a little bit and B is gonna, has hopefully been compiling some questions that folks have been asking. Um, and I would love to be able to answer any questions that folks have. Um, and yeah, B, go ahead and uh, get yourself on here and I'll go ahead and mute myself for a moment. We do not have any questions just yet. So if anybody has any burning questions, we are open. You can use the Q&A or you can use the chat um, to ask anything. I think we just did such a good job that nobody has any questions or maybe everybody's just fully impressed by the gravity of the situation and there's too many questions and they can't find one. Once you get the toolkit after this uh, webinar, if you have questions then feel free to reach out to us. Um, we are available by email or you can find us on the FGN Slack. Um, but we'll be happy to, to help afterwards once you're looking at the toolkit. It looks like we have some questions. What is the best way to utilize the Teams feature? I'm gonna share it quick and then I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel who might have some more insight. I would say that if your organization wants to brand it themselves, this is a great way to put their name and their logo specifically on it. Uh, the way that I can see this being super useful, especially if you're in a more rural area, if you're a trusted organization, the message is going to carry a lot better. Um, so if you feel like voters would connect with your organization and your logo or name versus the My Future, My Vote general campaign, I would say that's a really good way to use the Teams feature. But uh, Rachel, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I, I would say the the same thing there that it's a great way to kind of build affinity uh, for it. Um, I also see there's another question in the chat about teams and just whether they're invitation and, or whether people can join on their own. So I'll just tag that in here since we're on the team talk it, topic. Uh, we can set teams to be invitation only if you don't want other folks to be able to join your team. Um, but the default is that they are available so that anyone who's on the platform could join. So if they just join through the general link and then they see your organization and say, oh, I support that public land, they could join it. Uh, we will also create for you a team specific invite link so that you have that link and can invite people so they're joined directly onto that team. So if you create one, we will create that for you. I'm muted. <laughs> we have another question. Do you have any recommendations for working with a board that is shy to engage in this work? Yeah, I might head that and then turn it over to David right away. Um, I would say assure them over and over and over again that this is totally okay. And I think a good, a good rule of thumb is don't mention a candidate's, any candidate's name. Don't mention a political party. You are getting people to vote. You are not getting people to vote in any particular way. Your personal hope may be that they vote in a particular way, but as long as you're not guiding them in that direction, you are perfectly okay. Um, as far as knowing that like you can have that conversation 20 times and a person may still think it's uncomfortable, 
David and I are here to chat with folks. Tim Mooney is happy to chat with folks and really assure them if they need somebody who's an actual lawyer or somebody who is on the Hill in DC, if that helps carry a little bit more credibility, um, we're happy to do that for y'all. Um, but David, I wanna turn it over to you if you have any specifics on reluctant boards. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you just said. I think, you know, we can help you present information that clearly delineates uh, that it's legal uh, and permissible for your organization to do this. Um, but I think if, you know, as I mentioned earlier, perhaps appealing to how helping your community to engage in this way will enhance the work your organization does in other ways, building a public consciousness of their capacity and ability to engage in various ways uh, in democracy to advocate for public lands, I think holds a, a tremendous amount of potential for your organization to engage more with those people, to bring them into the fold more. It could lead to more fundraising, uh, you know, all, all the, the stacking of community engagement that I believe every organization in our network wants to achieve, I think can really, there's potential to do that through this. So perhaps that's a way, you know, a carrot to bring a board member uh, or a, a fellow staffer who isn't sold completely uh, with a baseline of understanding that there's no legal risk to doing this as long as it's done the right way. We have a question here from Jane. It says, will I be using my organization's website? Oh, hold on, it, went, it moved. <laughs> um, or will I be asking to access the membership database for emails, et cetera? Was that, will I be using my organization's website? Mm -hmm. I think the answer to this one is, you will be using Motivote as a database, so you can link uh, that your team, um, your team, if you create a team for your organization, you can link that to, on your website or your newsletter. Um, but then I think the question is like, what happens to the email addresses that go under that team? So Rachel's gonna probably be able to answer some of this, but if you've created your own team, um, some of the value of it is that you're collecting information that you can uh, get in contact with folks later with. So maybe you're curious, of the 5,000 people we sent this opportunity to, who engaged with it? That's really useful information for an organization. And if you have your own team, you can compile and collect that information on the tail end. Um, Rachel, I don't know if I misspoke or if there's more clarity you can add to that. No, that, that's correct. Yeah, and I see there's another question about that in the, the Q&A that you can see your members there, but in terms of the specific information like contact info, uh, we will be sending downloads of all of that information to the CLF team, um, and then they will work with you to get you the, the information for your specific team. Um, we have a question. Well, we have a comment here from Diane. It says, sometimes I am not sure if videos, et cetera, that you send us are for us to read, to be informed and inspired, or for us to share with our community. That was true for the video you emailed us today about voting. This one, most of us, you can share and you can um, share on your social media. This one specifically is so that you can just like share with everybody, your family, your friends, your network, and this. Yeah, I would say, especially with this campaign in that toolkit, there is two folders that have social media artwork and graphics that we are encouraging you to use. Um, the video that we shared, please share it. I am really proud of the work that went into that video. Um, I would love to see it across all our networks. And really just generally, if there is a video or graphic or any work that we've shared with you that you think would be helpful, this campaign or otherwise, ask and we're more than likely happy to share it and encourage you to use it. Um, we put a lot of work into our graphics and our comms and um, it really does mean a lot when folks use them and run with them in really relevant and appropriate ways. So if you're unsure, just ask, but the answer is most likely gonna be absolutely, how can we help you? Right. Um, there's also a question here uh, from Sarah Thomas. It says, what messaging have you found most successful for motive uh, for motivating red state voters who feel that their votes in non-local elections don't matter. David and Tim, if you're on there, I think you, uh, you'll you answer this better than I ever could. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And I 
there isn't a, a, a perfect answer for it other than it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, you know, you have to set an example for everybody else in your community. If, if nobody votes, nothing changes, um, whether it's red state or blue state. And so uh, that won't necessarily uh, resolve that person's concerns about the broader system that they're within. Uh, but ultimately, you know, when I talk to friends of mine who are people who don't vote, uh, I, I try to set the example not only by what I do, but also saying if, if you don't vote, then you're in a sense exacerbating that problem. David, while we have you on, uh, there's a, a question that I think you'll be able to uh, able to answer. He says, I am uh, a Friends Group's board member and also a volunteer for the local Democratic Party. Is that a conflict as long as I don't mention Friends in my Democratic Party communications? Yeah, the, a lot of the, the way you, the second sentence in that question, I think answers the question for you. You have to keep them absolutely separate. If you send an email to people about what you do in the Democratic Party, don't include this so that there isn't even an appearance that you are asking people to register to vote in the mindset of being members of the Democratic Party in your area. Um, to a degree, it might be a little harder for you to do this if you're somebody who typically sends emails to your personal lists urging them to do something for a party and then you go to them and say you should also register to vote. I think as long as you keep those separate in, in your emails, you'll, you'll be at least avoiding the perception that you're doing it on behalf of the party you work for. So uh, just be very clear to be explicit about not putting them in one document. Uh, and I'll also answer uh, Chris Gardner's question since yes. uh, that's the group that I created. Uh, so the short answer is it's not partisan. Uh, first of all, I use that term take the hill uh, as a double entendre because I'm an East Coaster and we have hills here and not mountains. Uh, but also just generally the idea that, you know, people who care about public lands should uh, take the hill and go to Capitol Hill and advocate for those lands that they care about. Um, but there's no mention in that name about the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, any candidate. So it is not partisan in any way. And please join my group. <laughs> We have a friendly competition going on with our yeah. with our team at CLF. I'm gonna have to respectfully disagree on that, and uh, you should join the A team for public lands. So you know, do what you need to. Okay, and we have one more question uh, from Brad. It says, "In what ways can individuals interact and communicate with each other on the motivate um, motivate platform?" Um, and it says, "Do we need to worry about monitoring any conversation on the platform?" Uh, the short answer here is they can't communicate with each other. They can join each other's teams. They can see kind of on the leaderboard how many actions they've taken and how many people they've invited, but that is the extent of that. So you don't need to worry about people communicating uh, with each other. You know, they can invite their friends off the platform, but there's no chat or comments or anything like that. Um, that's all the questions we have for now. Anybody else? Oh, wait, wait. Okay, while um, you're looking for that B, um, Tim, if you're still on, um, I did want to give you a quick plug. Um, as a avid podcast listener, I'm always excited when a new podcast comes on the scene. And Advocates uh, for Justice, Boulder Advocacy, are launching a new podcast series. The first one's going to launch tomorrow called The Rules of the Game. So if you love listening to podcasts on your drive to work or before bed, and if you're a political nerd, uh, you might really enjoy uh, Tim's new podcast. But Tim, I don't know if you're still on and able to speak to that real quickly. I am, and thank you for that plug, Andres. That's that's very kind of you. Yeah, Boulder Advocacy, we are getting back into podcasting. A uh, quick background, I started podcasting myself back in 2005. Yes, 2005 with Alliance for Justice. But uh, since I, my return to the organization, we're starting a brand new one, all on the rules that we've been talking about today and more broadly about advocacy as nonprofits. So if you're interested in that, go to boulderadvocacy.org slash podcasts or just search for Rules of the Game in your favorite podcast app. I love saying it. That was a nice promo, nice tight promo. Thanks, Andres. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And again, everybody, uh, we are right at the hour. It looks like we got everybody's questions. Um, 
you have other questions, again, you can always reach out to myself, David, or anybody else. Uh, but our hope is that, you know, starting today, starting right now, we are launching the first CLF Get Out the Vote campaign and definitely not the last. Um, we're going to learn a lot along the way, but our hope is that as we learn how to be more effective in getting people to the polls and voting for public lands, that we are bringing everybody with us. I look ahead to 2022 and 2024 and think, you know, if we can learn from this next two months, we can have a tremendous impact on all of our landscapes for all of our communities that we get to work with and alongside. So we realize that this is a stressful time. We realize that there is a lot going on in the world right now. And what I would urge everybody on this call to do is look at the next two months as their opportunity to help shape the most perfect and just future they can envision. And I think the way that we can do that is by making sure that we all participate in our democracy. So we're happy to answer any and all questions that come up along the way. We realize it's going to take a lot of work, but we're happy to be there with you all. So on behalf of everybody at CLF and all of our partners, thank you so much for joining us. Um, please stay in contact and I will send a follow up email as soon as I can with all of this information. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it.